be here. And thank you for that introduction. And uh, I'd like to correct him. Uh, he's given me more credit than is due, because the school was not started by me, but my, by my husband. Um, so back in 2008, as he said, uh, when I just graduated from the School of Computer Science, uh, I had choices. I had to choose between a job at the Silicon Valley and coming back to India and working in a suburban school, which is upcoming, and um, in one of the most backward districts of Tamil Nadu, I should add. There are a couple of interesting uh, facts about the school. One is that it was started by a 24-year-old uh, MBA grad who did not have prior experience in education. Uh, the second is that it serves uh, predominantly children from um, who come from a f who are first generation learners, which means the expectation out of the school and the dependency on the school is far higher. Uh, the reason why I've been called here today is to talk about a computer science project day, which was held at our school last month. Uh, so I think a little bit of background about the school uh, was necessary to start with. The school, as I said, was founded in the year 2006, and it has grown from a strength of 300 to 1,500 in a span of three years. And the very first batch of our class 10 secured a 100% first class. Let's just have a look at a couple of snaps of the school. So as the initiatives head, let me just give you a quick run of some of the initiatives uh, that we've taken up. We have a series called Dare to Dream, wherein we bring eminent personalities. We've had uh, the project director of Chandrayaan speaking. We've had uh, Sri Kapil Dev speaking to children, not just from our school, but also from the corporation schools around th in Thiruvallur and also the government schools. Uh, we've also uh, established a cricket academy, which consists of players equally from our school as well as corporation schools in Thiruvallur. So uh, we have two hours of the week dedicated to learning, which is outside the textbook. Um, we, in fact, force teachers to think out of the box and come up with different ways to convey messages and also to carry out activities. These are a few snapshots of that. Um, so now coming back to the computer science project day, um, I would like to just put across a couple of lessons that we learned through the entire experience. And I hope you didn't read the slide. The first lesson is to begin from what you know. Um, especially when you're conveying new concepts to children, it's important that you start from what they already know. Um, I understand that this audience consists primarily of uh, students from engineering. <laughs> Uh, we data structures, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, computer science or from different fields, it is generally typically taught in the first or second year of engineering. So this was a simple way of 
at least conveying the concepts to, to, to the students. Next, we um, come to lesson two, which is to apply to an example. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm sure about class M. I'm going to explain a more short example. Given the example, it's based on the idea of dividing a problem into several problems until it's easy to solve. What is an example of dividing complex technique? An example of motion is as follows. Take an example of the following numbers. 1, 7, 4, 3, 9, 5, 2. The final sequence is split at the middle giving. 1, 7, 4, 3, 9, 5, 2. Nine, five, two. How does this split us? One, seven, four, three, nine, five, two. Now the problem is divided into some problems that are easily solvable. So how can you One, seven, three, four, five, nine, two. Next, what will happen to us? One, three, four, seven, two, five, nine. And finally, the last step of merging this. One, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. Here is the answer that we will require. Thank you. So, uh, divide and conquer is again a topic of data structures taught again in the first or second year of engineering. And uh, when we tried pushing the limit further and tried explaining concepts such as analysis of algorithm, arriving at the complexity of an algorithm, we were taken aback by surprise because children from ninth standard could actually understand it. So when you set your, sorry, when you set your limits, try pushing the boundary because like I've experienced uh, in the last one and a half years, you are taken aback by surprise by the ability of children to learn such concepts. Now, um, the next lesson is explore what you use. We all know that as children grow older, they start asking fewer and fewer questions, which is probably why learning usually takes place at a much higher rate when children are still young. And we need to inculcate the habit of questioning, of exploring what you see on a day-to-day -day basis into children who are into a regimented schooling system which is why children must start questioning about how the AC works, how the refrigerator works, how your uh, search engine works, for that matter. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Ashura. My teammates and I made a project on working up a search engine. For that, we took the example of just Google and explored its function. My project made us to understand how the key components of the Google are really working. Let us see in a very brief way. First, the Google box. It searches the pages in the web server and reports to the Google. The page ranking is just by ranking the pages on the priorities basis of number of hits. Then the documents are stored in the index server, which is a massive dot data base. From the data index server, the documents are full all relevant documents related to the topic. Finally, the page builder. It is nothing but it populates the results into a simple result page, which can be visual to us in our monitor. The working of a search engine made us to appreciate the work that goes into obtaining the result to our query. The most important fact is that the time taken to show all these facts is just a simple 0.25 seconds, which makes us realize how important the computing is. The next uh, lesson is to find concepts hidden in your, in your own life. If you have noticed so far in all the videos that I have shown, the children did not use a computer at all. Because these concepts, computational thinking, as they call it, is beyond the machine. We have uh, so much of parallel computing that happens in Indian cooking. We have pipelining that goes into the way we do our laundry. We have graph theory applied to the way our traffic signals work. So it's all about finding these concepts which are actually integrated in your own life. So let's watch a video of how Children actually saw a couple of concepts which are being used in our own school. Are considered to be the vertices. 
where two sides are opposite to each other in a cube, then I have this added between them in the graph. So, therefore, a cube can be recon reconstructed from a graph. Now, this topic will be contributed by my friend Jeremy. Hi. We also wanted to carry out some of the practical applications of graph theory in our school. So, we arrived at a graph that represents different points to which the school circular is circulated as vertices. We also added vertices existed in between any two vertices. We calibrated the distance between the vertices by counting the number of stairs needed to get from one point to another. We also found the shortest path to cover all the vertices beginning from the vertex that represents the school office. This is the route that gets the information across optimally when a person needs to circulate it. That was graph theory being applied at the school to find out the best route to be taken to circulate uh, circulars to the different vertices, which represents different uh, locations where the circular needs to reach. The next lesson is um, to find a purpose and solve a real problem. We, uh, as a country, we have so many technicians. We probably have the highest number of programmers. But how many problem solvers are we actually generating? How many people can look at a situation and say that this is a problem and probably I could use my knowledge, probably I could use technology to get somewhere ahead and solve a problem. And when you understand that you are actually making a difference, which is what all of us crave for, you, your learning of the subject becomes all the more interesting. So uh, a few months back when I was speaking to someone and I said, uh, I'm training school children to pick up requirements engineering. They thought I was crazy because it's not even taught in an engineering curriculum. But we tried and it didn't work. Um, children actually sat down in the school office, observed the working of the school for an entire day, came up with different breakdowns, which is uh, hindrances in the flow of work, and arrived at a requirements spec. And from that, they developed a front end. And these were children of class 11. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Lipika of Standard Lab. worked on a project that focused on requirement engineering, which is an important part in software engineering. We used a technique called contentional inquiry. Our objective was to find the hassle the school faced in everyday operation and how the technology would help them to solve. We spent a day in the school office observing the various interactions that took place. We then arrived at five different models. The physical model tells you about the physical setup of the office is a hindrance to work. The cultural model tells you about the various people and how they get influenced to work. The sequence model tells you about the sequential activities that are based on trigger. The workflow contains the artifact which is addressed. We then analyze the model in a diagrammatic representation and arrive at major breakdown that each model contained. The software solution we propose should overcome these major breakdowns. Here is an example of simple sequential model, trigger. The principal asks a cultural coordinator to get the students for cultural event. The cultural coordinator does not have the record of students by data. So she picks up the student based on her judgment. Here the breakdown occurs. This is one of the examples that we have covered. It indicates that the student database should also contain the extracurricular activities. Likewise, we have analyzed the breakdowns in five different models to arrive at the front end of our solution. Thank you. So um, you may wonder why uh, I'm laying so much emphasis uh, to computer education right from the school level, because you could always opt for it later on. But computer concepts are something universal. They are like mathematics. When you have the foundation, you can become a better social activist, you can be become a better filmmaker, a better photographer or a better biologist. So it's something that all of us need. And which is why at the school level, the foundation needs to be stronger than it is right now. Unfortunately, in today's curriculum, we see so much of emphasis on learning tools and learning software, learning commands. In fact, even by hearting commands, which are not developing problem solvers or scientists. They're just making technicians out of our uh, brilliant pool of students. So what is required is a change in uh, the way computer science curriculum is taught. And we often also hear people saying that if you are good at logic and reasoning, you're probably going to be a good student of computer science. 
If you just reverse that statement, you realize that if you are good at computer science concepts, it's very likely that you're good at logic and reasoning. So computer science as a subject becomes a platform to improve reasoning and logic skills, which is a very important life skill today. So um, as computer science is less hated as compared to mathematics, it can be a novel way to uh, spread, uh, to inculcate reasoning skills among students. Um, I would like to conclude with a picture of a very small subsection of the team. There were over 100 presenters and over 70 projects carried out. And um, in themes like natural language processing, graph theory, uh, there was cryptography, networks, and so on. And uh, that's about it. Thank you so much.